did your relationship with your father change when filming Kobe? I think one of the things that we didn't quite anticipate was how compliant Kobe would be when we were actually filming. We thought we would actually be much more on the sidelines, I think, watching him go about his business and it would be up to us to capture the, the material as it was happening. And we had a new camera and I was really still learning how to use this camera. So in many instances when I was using the long lens, for example, um, I was asking Kobe to please slow down for me, please could you repeat it again? And I think it was in a way him understanding that for me I was still learning, I'm still learning my trade as a filmmaker and in this particular case it was about learning a trade as a, as a camera person. I was quite surprised at um, how spontaneous Kobe was, especially when we bumped into people on in the street and he would just start chatting to them. And so that was great material, you know, it happened in Switzerland a couple of times, it happened when we went to visit his old flat and at the top of Ara Street and he just bumped into people and he would just start chatting to them. What one new thing did you learn about your father in the process of filming? <laughs> Where does this come from? As a child I used to spend quite a bit of time in his workshop and just watching him make things not in a very focused sort of way, but I was always just aware of that making process going on alongside me with whatever I was doing. Suddenly, as we were filming, we had to watch everything in great detail. And what I really loved seeing was the actual process of something evolving from a piece of metal into a piece of finished jewellery. What is your favourite piece of jewellery that you have seen your father produce? I was going to put it on before we came here, but we had already locked the door, so I haven't got it. It's a ring. Um, it was an old ring that I'd inherited from my grandmother, from Kobe's father when she died. It wasn't a ring we particularly, any of us particularly liked. And I asked Kobe if he would melt it down for me, which he did. And some people may be aware of those rings where he would get a piece of metal, melt it down. The outer shape of the ring was just determined by the way the metal melted and then he would cut a very, very um, careful circle within it. And I've always loved seeing that process happen, that, that, that melting process and then seeing what he made out of that. We haven't got it here, but... The, no, it sorry, no rings. But it is in the film. <laughs> you or we've released both features and documentaries. Which do we prefer and why? Whenever I'm making a documentary um, and, and I'm struggling with the material because it's not quite doing what I want it to do and I, I keep thinking, oh, I wish we were doing a drama and we could just have total control and shape it. And then whenever I'm doing a, a dramatic feature, I'm, I'm thinking, I just want spontaneity, I want reality. So um, I suppose I'm never really satisfied. I always want, the grass is always greener on the other side. I like doing both of them for different reasons. As I said, documentaries, it's great to work with reality, drama, it's, it's great to have the ability to just to, to, to have almost total control. The way we've been making our dramas more recently is incorporating a lot of improvisation techniques as a basis for the development of the screenplay. To a certain extent, we've been able to bring in some of that spontaneity and the unexpected things that happen in the, document in a, the process of making a documentary to bring that into drama in an albeit more controlled way. When we're making a documentary I think this is what I really love doing and when I'm making a drama I think this is it as well. We're not locked in saying one is better than the other, it depends on what the story is. This is a question for you, did you ever want to be a jeweller yourself? No, I love being in the workshop and I love being part of a family and my mother as well was, she was a maker, we were all makers in the family. Um, but in a way my bent went towards filmmaking very early and it was at secondary school that I had a drama teacher, I was terribly bored at school. She gave me a Super 8 camera and she said go and make a film, this will keep you busy. And from the moment she gave me that camera and I went out into central Otago with a couple of friends and made a very esoteric little film, um, I knew that that was what I wanted to do with my life and so the question never really came up of, about what else I would possibly do what our whole family is about, is about making things, whether it's on film, whether it's weaving like my mother, whether it's jewellery like Kobe or landscape gardening like my sister, we're all makers and that's what makes us happy.